Uh, hello everyone, and welcome to part two for the Pod Racer modeling series. Um, so in this portion, we're going to create this bottom thruster. So I'm going to Alt H. Oh, hold on here, let me turn on uh, screencast keys for you. So I have uh, the bottom cylinder down here now. So I'm going to go into front view, and then take this front face, extrude it once, hit S, hold control, and just scale it in. Just once should be good. We're going to do the same thing uh, on the back here. Delete this face. And then what I want to do is make this hollow much like a real one would be for now. So select all of these. Hold Alt and right click to select the loop. And then hit Shift S. Cursor to selected. Now if we grab this face. Extrude it out and back. And then hit Shift S. Selection to cursor, and then delete that face. And you can see here now it's all lined up. But at the current moment, they are not connected. So what we do is we select all of those vertices, and then you hit W, and then remove doubles. And now it is all one uh, solid piece for us. So, you know, I want to add this. Um, what is it? It's, it's rounded on the side there. You know, it goes back and it's smaller. So, what we're going to do is we're going to add just a couple of loop cuts here. Uh, three should be good. And then we have to add them on this inside circle as well. I'm just going to select the vertices on the back here. Scale them all down. Uh, make sure you go into wire view so you can select the inside loop as well when you're selecting these. Uh, select that down as well. Uh, I'm not quite sure on how much of a taper I want yet, but I feel like that's pretty good for now. And also on here, I want this uh, front bit to not be so, uh, you know, smooth and linear. So I'm going to select this one. And uh, because I'm just making it wider, I don't necessarily want to select this inner loop cut. And expand that out because I feel like it will throw off later when we add in these thrusters. So uh, it's hard to make any changes here without melting through the top. So I'm going to do Control L, select it, or go into Object Mode actually, select everything, and drag it down just a little bit uh, away from that top plate here. And then we'll go through and we'll just scale this up a little bit. Same issue still. Uh, so I think the best way to do it would be to just make this just a little bit, a little bit smaller. We hope we have to get the inner one when we're trying to make it smaller. Shoot, here we go. Just a little bit. And then I think that we'll take these front ones and make them just a little bit. So there we have it. We have this nice uh, loop shape here. So now we're going to go in and add the uh, blades right here. So to do this, go into edit mode here, select this front circle, shift S, cursor to selected, and now when we go out of, ob or back into object mode, we have the cursor here. So we're going to add a cube, go into front view, go into tab edit mode, and move it up so it's exactly on the uh, um, object center here. We want the bottom on the object center. So. We're going to go into the front, scale it in a whole bunch, because it is, of course, like a fan blade. And then we will grab the top here and drag it down to the top of this opening. And then, of course, it's a great deal too thick on the side, so we just scale all of this in. And I want to move it back one. So the front is to the origin. So now we have what our blade's going to look like. And we, I want to put a crease down the middle. And this way then I can take these sides. And I can put them down just a little bit. Next up, I want to have them curved a little bit. You can see here they actually splay out. So the best way to do that is to add two loop cuts in the center. And select these front two faces and just move them back a little bit. Uh, you don't have to go too crazy. And then these are um, bending a bit weird up here. So I'm going to take these and see if I can move them back here. 
Move this with these two front vertices. Move these back a smidge. And there we have this shape. And that seems just a little bit too thick still. So I'll shrink it up a smidge. And there we have it. So I also want them, on this they don't curve to the side, and I want that effect. So what we do is we select this front vertice right here. Shift S, cursor is selected. And then we grab all these front faces here. And of course, feel free to style this uh, how you would like. And then we want to make the origin the 3D cursor down there. So we go down here, 3D cursor. Rotate it to the side, just uh, control three times. Looks pretty good. And then we're going to we're going to duplicate this around the origin several times here. But first off, I want to add a subdivision subsurf to see how it's going to look. You can see here this is really uh, you know flimsy and curvy looking, and I don't really want that. So I'm going to add in some loop cuts here to really crease up the edges, and make them very sharp. All right. And that looks just a little too thick there, so I want to go in and grab these front ones. And I just want to move them out just a little bit. See how that looks. See, that gives me a much more uh, defined curve on there. I'm also going to set the shading to smooth on the side. So now we have this. If we hit, if we go into edit mode and you select everything, hit Alt R, it's going to duplicate it around an angle over here so right now it's going 90 and that's only halfway we want it to go the full 360 degrees and then it stayed with only nine of these so we have to turn this up to the amount that we need and i'm going to see how does 15 look now why I, I want um i don't want you to be able to see past them because otherwise we'd have to go in there we have to model it and make it look much more realistic in there from the front so i'm going to do this until Right about there, because now you can't really see inside of there, although it still looks like an engine. Uh, let's make it an even 20, actually. So, we got another issue with this shading here, and what this is, these are the normals broken as it rotates it around the origin. So select everything, hit your spacebar, and hit make normals consistent. And there we have it. Everything's got the nice shape to it. And I want to also select everything W remove doubles and as you can see it removed 159 it removed all of these random ones in the center as well as any overlapping blades that might have been created so finally we have to add this point here much like a real engine has so go back into edit mode we're going to add a simple cylinder now right now it's at 32 vertices and that's way too many because it's going to be smoothed with the subdivide so I'm going to stick it to about 12 and even that might be a bit too many here. So for starters, delete these front faces, or these top faces. And we have a nice flat cylinder. Control L to select the entire thing. Rotate it 90 degrees. And then scale it down till it's covering that center bit. With all those overlaps. So you can see where this is starting to come in. So we then want to add in some loop cuts. And then we will smooth this down. Uh, right now origin is still set to 3d cursor so we'll change that to medium point scale it down scale it up and now i want to go e one more time extrude all those alt m at center and that's to uh, bind it all at once and then we can just put this out here to a nice point and there we have the point and of course you can go through uh and you you can play around you know, to your own personal taste if you want like a larger one or a thinner one. It's all up to you. I'm going to go with this nice, nice pointy one. Pretty simple. Uh, nothing too crazy. So, we've now got the fan put in here. We can rotate it around. and That's how it's going to look in the main bit. And, uh... I think we'll call it good for this tutorial. Building the fan in the next one. We'll go through and we'll add in the details on the actual thruster part here. So, thank you.